Hi, Johnny Vanderford with Lorraine County Community College's MEMS and Microelectronic Manufacturing Program, as well as Merit Manufacturing Electronics and Rework Institute for Training. I'm currently running our Panasonic NPMW2 pick and place in a simulation mode. I'm testing to make sure that the uh, axes are all aligning up to the correct fiducials, as well as just looking at, in general, how the two pickup heads that are in the back here. The one on the front picks up of 16 parts at a time. The smaller parts, which happen to be loaded on these taping reels down here, right? These are usually small parts on the millimeter scale. But in the back, there is another head that moves in the back that actually picks up and puts down larger parts from both taping reels and as well as trays, right? So our system actually contains two ways to pick things up and put things down. Taping reels, which have to be fed with new parts every once in a while and then the trays which have to be loaded with new parts and it got me wondering you know what are the various ways that if i need to refill a tray in particular a tray that's in the back how do i actually do that so let's walk around here and actually make that determination as to how that actually works we'll walk past the uh stencil printer the pick and play system coming around to the back of the machine here and okay, we're now currently at the, oops, went a little bit too far there, there we go. So now we're at the back of the pick and place where there are additionally, we pan down here for a second, there are tape and reels that are down on this part of it here. But there's also a tray system that's here where I can load onto here trays, JEDEC trays of parts that may be all on a uh, little bit of a tray here. So how does one actually load up a tray. Now, normally speaking, the machine is counting how many parts it's putting down as it's putting them down. And once it reaches a point where the tray is beginning to run out, the little signal tower that's over there will start to flash yellow, indicating that there's a problem. Once the tray runs out, then it'll start flashing yellow and beeping at that point, stopping the line, stopping everything that's in, that's uh, well, pausing everything that's behind it, basically not letting anything new go in and waiting to refill the tray. Now, if I wanted to actually take a look, because the one tray that's actually in there, I don't know if you can see it there, it's this little blue tray. So hang on one second. Once the uh, pickup head moves, it's in a spot where it's kind of paused at the moment. Now it's going to realign itself. There we go. You see the little blue tray that's there? That's actually got some parts. And what if I wanted to load a brand new tray onto on top of that? There are three ways I can stop the pick and play system from so that I can get that tray out. Um, one of the ways that I can do it is by hitting the EMO button, which that's for emergency uses only. Don't do that. As well as turning the servo switch, which is a safety switch that's supposed to be turned off so that none of the electronics actually have anything, um, any power going to them so that I can service the machine, do something like that. I don't want to do that either. Common way to stop the machine is to do what's called a single stop. By hitting the stop button right now, the pick and play system stops immediately where it's at puts down all of its parts, and then stops. So it's paused. So right now, if you were to look at my screen in terms of how many parts I've put down, you can see that on my screen, I have put down 147 of 210 parts. That's how much that I've actually put down in the case of this one here. So it hasn't yet finished the board, all right? Technically speaking, I actually can't get that tray out of the machine right now because it's currently in use. It's currently trying to pick up parts from it and put parts down. I actually have to wait for the full cycle to actually stop in order for it to do that. Now, there's a nice way to be able to do that on the Panasonic pick and place tools. I'm going to go ahead and hit activate again so that we can oops, go in the back here and hit activate. And this will begin the cycle from where it left off with it here. So the heads are going to snap right back into action again and they're starting to move. I'm going to hit the cycle stop button, which is going to wait until this board is completed, you can see here that the board is getting all the way over to 204 parts, 207 parts, 210 parts, and now, now it's paused at this point. Now at this point, the machine is waiting for the board to go, well, it's not waiting, it lets the board go all the way through. And then at this point, now what I can do is go on over to one of these modes here. Oops, actually have to, Go in the back, you nope, know, nope. Oh, don't tell me I can't do it. There we go. 
Table number two. There we are. Tray. There we go. <laughs> Scared myself for a second. Thought I locked myself out for a little bit. And now what I do is I go down to change tray for the tray that I want to have here. It actually brings the tray down to this little slot right here where I can open up the slot, take this out, put in new parts onto my tray, and then, or take the tray out and put a new tray on, load it back in to this part here, hit a pallet confirm button on my screen. Okay, so now the pallet's being confirmed back to its original spot to make sure that it is loaded into place. All right, once it gets a whole bunch of the pallet information with that, now I go back to the production screen. I say, all right, the cycle stop is done. Hit activation and start. And now it lets the next board go on through and we'll begin processing the new board. There we go. Easy way to replace the boards. If I want to get ahead of the game and just make sure before the machine starts complaining that they're empty, that's the way to do it. More to come from Lorain County Community College's MEMS and Microelectronic Manufacturing Program, as well as MERIT, Manufacturing Electronics and Rework Institute for Training. If you know a workforce that is looking for training, let us know. Uh, we'll put our information in the comments below. If you know students that are interested in a college education and a community college in electronic manufacturing, let us know. We'll put our information in the comments below. We'll uh, see you around on the next one, folks. Bye-bye.